Eugene, the surfers are down again. The boffins don't know what's wrong. And you're the only one who really understands those damn machines. I need you down there now. Okay, but uh, isn't there an engineer around who could do this? I mean, I have to be getting on with these papers, and if I don't get them... Now, done, Eugene! Don't make me ask you again! Uh, yes, sir, ma'am. Right away. So you said you wanted to know more about the genie? Yeah, actually, uh, it's been a real interest of mine. Uh, I've been interviewing people from all over and just... Uh... It started back in 2018. Yeah. I was at my buddy Pete's house. <sighs> Fucking hell, mate. That was good shit. How would you know? Mate, how long have I known you? Like, two years? Two years. It's only two years, mate, calm down. In two years, mate, that's like... That's like twice as long as it takes to grow a child. <laughs> I know! Mind blown! <laughs> anyway, stop hogging that blunt, come on. Stop hogging that blunt! It's a bong, you pleb. You need money to pay for that shit. I don't care. All I know is when I smoke that that shit, I feel so fucking special. You are special. Thank you, Mr. Dealer. You're welcome. But I told you I'm not a dealer. I'm just a guy who knows people who like to set things on fire and inhale them orally. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, what the fuck? Oh, come on, mate, where are you going? Somewhere where I don't have to see you violating my couch. I love you. Fuck, that was good stuff. Sorry, what does this have to do with the genie? Oh, yeah. So me and Pete were good friends. He had a crush in our pal, Sarah. One day, me and Sarah were out at the local park. Hey, look, all I'm saying is if God didn't want us to eat them, he wouldn't have made them out of bacon. What the fuck are you even talking about? Don't argue with me, you know it's true. Yeah, well, as debatable as that statement might be, it's also nothing to do with what we were talking about. I was talking about veganism. And I was talking about Pete. Who is? He's vegetarian, it's different. It's still dumb, dude. Why are you so obsessed with him anyway? I'm not obsessed. He's all you ever talk about. I said I wasn't obsessed. And say I wasn't consistent. Oh my god. What a weirdo. I'm not a weirdo. Not you, butt knuckle. Him. Who is that? You what? What? You tell me you've never heard of old Bazza the Bin Shaman. Bin Shaman, seriously. My uncle Rob told me that he wants caught in trying to kill our cat or something. Oh, sick fuck. My uncle stopped him. He went off on one, he started screaming about evil spirits, ghosts or some shit. He's totally mental, mate. Yeah, and an alky. Pollux, you're making this up. Nah, mate, he's a proper head case. Hey, look. He's shouting at that guy. Wait, is that...? It's Pete!
You won't be running from no demons in them hills, girly. What the fuck? The evil genie's coming with his wicked, nasty magics. He's real. He's coming for all you girls. He's heard your wishes and it is time for the granting. So what happened next? Some guy called Rick or something saw the shaman in a tiz and dragged him off. He was bare off his meds. Hey guys, look at this. Some guy was killed last week, strangled to death. Greenbank Road? You know what though? I bet those freaks did it. What? I bet those two loony motherfuckers killed, killed that kid. And they just, you know, they're blaming the genie as a scapegoat. Well, calm down there, CSI Miami. No need to start blaming people. Could all be unrelated. Even if he were real, you have to ask him for something, right? Dude, nah, dude, the genie ain't real. He's made up to scare tourists, you know, like the Bobman Beast and Dawn French. That night, on their way home, Pete and Sarah were attacked. Let me walk you home. Oh yeah, you just leave me on my own, yeah? Fine. Just try not to have too much fun. <laughs> You're right. what they described as a great big man with a burnt face and an eye patch. Sound familiar? The genie. Bingo. Why? Because you're younger. You get out all the time. I just don't understand. You don't understand me anyway. You never have and you never will. I think you should just stop being such a prick just because you don't get it anymore because you're old and senile. And I wish I never have to see you again. So what happened next? Were they, were they badly hurt? Well, they managed to get away and head back to mine, but Pete got hit pretty hard. The place got wide open. There was blood everywhere. The doctor said it was some type of switchblade, but Pete and Sarah insisted the man wasn't armed. So did you call the police? We did. But by this point, the old bill had been spread so thin that even a stabbing wasn't enough to get them riled up. Not without any camera footage or able witnesses to the attacker anyway. So whoever did it was, when they just got away with it? We tried to act ourselves, but we were just kids. Oh, and also I wasn't convinced the genie was who Sarah said he was. How do you mean? 
Well, you see, I had my bets on the Ben Shaman and his friend Rick. See, I told you so. Oh, oh come on, oh. Pete. Stop being a little oh. bitch. Come on, we've got work to do. So then what? Did you, did you find out who the killer was? No, of course not. We got about 40 minutes into tracking them down and Pete collapsed out of blood loss. Two days later, it was found that a man by the name of Eugene Ernest was responsible for the killings. So they were connected? More than connected, it was the genie. So Eugene was presumed to be dead in the 70s after the Western Telecoms freak accident. Oh, I know the one. They said it was the reason the company shut down. Yeah. So it turns out he didn't die. He was sent to an asylum and he escaped the asylum. They were so desperate not to let anybody know that they faked his death. No way. Yeah, way. And it gets better. Turns out over the years, different people tried to leak the news, but they were scrubbed out. All they managed to leak were bits of his medical record, including his name. <coughs> Eugene. Gene. Ernest. E. Genie. The name wasn't related to this grunting at wishes. It was his real name. Oh, wow. So wait... How did he hide all those years? Uh, and why did he only come after people who were wishing for stuff? Oh yeah, that. So it turns out he was hiding right in plain sight of the old Western Telecoms building. According to the news, he was some kind of genius, gone rogue. He repaired all the telecom machines and used them to track the GPS of people's phones. So that's how he tracked his victims? Yep. And the wishes thing was just a trigger for him. The last thing that happened before his accident, he was asked to do something that wasn't his job. Oh man. Someone should make a movie out of this. I know. Mind. Boom. Well, thank you for all that. I'm gonna kill with that story. Oh, um, one thing I forgot to ask. Did they have a catch? Well, apparently, yeah. I died in custody. Oh. Ah. Cheers, thank you.